No shoe ridge trail. Following big dirt. Got Mount Rainier right in front of us and a little bit of a smoky haze, but it's not too bad. The air's cleaned up here the last few days. Been riding up here at Table Mountain for the last couple of days. This trail, considering the name, the Snowshoe Ridge Trail. A ridge trail, that's still can get exciting. You can see there's a fairly good low side. Going through this beautiful valley down here. So we're gonna do this out and back. It is mid-September. Last weekend was Labor Day weekend. Huh? Oh yeah, why not? Just take it one turn at a time. Pretty nice switchback actually. Not overridden, look at this. It's a nice trail. I like this. Might be a little... So I've ridden two out of the last three days. So this is ride day three out of the last four. Wouldn't say I'm wore out, but not my freshest. My 300's all busted up, so I'm on the 450, which is kind of a fat pig. That's that. 300 had a brake problem, wheel problem idle problem. Send it to the glue factory. Have Danger fix it up for me. Very rarely does that 300 let me down, but oh, I just think I may have run it out of rear brake oil. And I guess getting a flat tire isn't bike's problem. The idle thing might have been my fault with a really dusty, dirty air filter for a couple few days. Might have messed with the brains of this, the ECU. All right, so, so far this is a really nice trail. I mean, this is just pristine. Fairly good descent we're taking here. And uh, I think McDirt here is going gasoline free. He's kind of a cheapskate, you know, he wants to save as much gas as possible. So I'm kind of learning that trade from him. Not a bad strategy. Alright. Yeah, pretty good uh pretty good drop-offs here. This is uh, not beginner material for sure. Very green and beautiful. The fall colors haven't showed up yet, but I would imagine got a nice fall day on this trail. Pretty cool. Today we have absolutely perfect riding conditions. It's gonna be probably low 60s and sunshine. And last night it rained a bit, so no dust. You gotta love fall riding in the Cascades. It's the peak time to be here. Ooh, rocky section. Bumpity bumpity bump. All right. Little glacial till here. place was covered in glaciers, the whole Cascade region. Some amazing rock quarries for that. You have an appreciation.
appreciation for geology like I do. It's a fascinating place to ride, albeit it can get very bumpy, physically demanding on your wrists, your shoulders, forearms. Pretty good descent. Tires today, I've got a moose with a golden tire fatty up front. On the rear, I got tubeless with an IRC VE33S and a bit overinflated. It's kind of a gummy tire. I got it at 13 PSI. This is show it to uh, so just keep going, huh? Yeah, let's go for a little while. We'll see if there's any more trail to it. Hit a piece of double track here. I don't know if that was the end of the trail or not. Never been on it. Got these last couple of days. They're my first riding really at Table Mountain, other than uh, Devil's Gulch, which is the farthest north trail in the system, which is a damn good one. Not going to be riding it this weekend. I did it a couple few years ago with some guys. And had a nice ride. Kind of a challenging trail. Good loop. Oh, there's there's the trail again. All right. Like the detour on the snowshoe ridge. Is that that show the snowshoe ridge? We'll keep going on that then. Actually, that's what we're on. That's, that's what we're on anyway. What? This is Snowshoe Ridge. No, well, you said... Yeah, we're on Snowshoe Ridge yeah. Trail. Well, that's a single trail. Okay, let's get on. Okay, looks like we uh, almost rode off the trail here. some of the other places that I ride frequently, Tainum and especially Little Natchez. And over the years, many of those trails have just become so overridden, you know, whooped out and all that. So to be able to ride on this trail here, right here, in such a underused shape, without being a problem, it's nice. So here's the sign, there was the exit. We missed this sign and we went down this gravel road. So if you leave that thing, it's just right here underneath it. All right, good old McDirt. He's got his uh, GPS tracking shit with him. And uh, he knew that there was something the low side. But good for him. All right. Again, what a beautiful smooth trail here. We just left that Jeep road. Boy, was that thing a rocky mess. This trail here is just nice.
that would be even more fun going up. So this would make a very good mountain bike trail going down. like the single track just flowed through it started off as kind of being wide maybe somebody tried to take vehicles on it that they weren't supposed to but now we've resumed the single track again absolute gem of a trail. This is it. That was it. And Fuck, that was awesome. Yeah, I see that there's a trail sign right there and a wooden sign right behind us.
We are going up that whole thing. Lion Rock, pretty cool, wow. We can see uh, McDirt there doing a bit of a wheelie turn on the switchback, right there. got too much air in this tire I'd rather not deflate it right now if I don't have to but that might be what's coming next couple of nice turns there. Whoo, over inflated tire a little bit, but it is brand new. It is a great tire, so and I just lugged it. I didn't spin the shit out of it. Feel the weight of this bike. David in front of me right there. I'm gonna go up the rest of this. So far, this is really awesome. View of the mountains over here to the right, or in front of me here, right. Camera still running.
challenging switchbacks. More from a physical standpoint than anything. Nice big slope here. Gotta have a good breakfast. That was fun. Wow. That very first switchback was a tough one. I saw you pop a wheelie on it. Oh, yeah. So this one here. All right, we're, we're now on Nainham Meadows, which is going to probably be a real short trail that's going to take us to Nainham Creek, which I've already ridden a couple of times this trip. And again, that whole thing is a rather rocky affair. Now we're going through this meadow. And uh, Owl Creek was pretty rocky. And so far, the meadow trail is nice and smooth. And flowy. Make uh, David happy. He likes, he likes a good, narrow, single track flowy. Get to the rock garden next. This place suffered a really bad forest fire about 10 years ago on the recovery. It was one of the worst in state history, I'm thinking. trails here. If I had to guess, I'd say there's probably uh, five, five days of riding. So if you came out for a week, rode for five days, chilled out for a couple, you'd have a pretty good week. Devil's Gulch being kind of the crown jewel trail of this area, I think. Though I haven't done Tronson Meadow, Tronson Ridge yet. Today we're running some of the trails that I haven't hit. Red Hill, Tronson, but Mount Lillian Trail and the Snowshoe Ridge, so far my favorites up around here on this trip. God, it's a really nice trail here. A lot better than that Owl Creek Trail. I mean, the Owl Creek Trail was fun, but after riding it a couple times, I think I was done. Rocky. Ooh, big drop off here. We're going below. Assuming we need to descend here down to the creek. All right, we just made our first switch back to go down. Here we have the rocks showing up.
you can see how many people have come in here with chainsaws clearing this place out over the years after the forest fire it's a monumental task by volunteers big thanks to them for the work they did to reopen this area as you can see there's a lot of dead trees still standing but you know you get a little wind in here and they just keep falling down they'll fall down for years so it's going to take continual maintenance I'm not sure who spearheaded the last effort, but if you're watching this video, certainly in the comment section, discuss how it was done and who did it and what's done annually and how people can volunteer, donate money, uh, you know, to help keep these trails open. Oh, I don't know. More and more of it. Take a little walk. Okay. Look at all the caves. Leading the way. Ready? Go ahead. All right. We're going to see here if I can keep up with the dude. The man, the myth, the legend. Tiger Tanker. He's standing. The man is standing. You know why he's standing? Because he knows someone's watching. Uh oh, he's sad. Maybe he thinks I got he got away from me. Maybe I'll get on his butt. I'll get him to stand up. No, oh, he's up. So it took 20 miles to get to this trail. 20 miles of dirt road. But I guess it was worth it. We did skip, it looked like a decent trail on the map. But he's the leader today so far. We got a pretty nice loop plan. 
I brought two extra bottles of gas. We've been for a good 100 miles if I have to be. Oh, I was taking a right. Interesting. Uh, another side track. God damn it. I want to keep riding to be honest. I don't want to stop and look around. How many miles? 23. It's uh, Tiger Tanker here with McDirt. We are at Table Mountain and we are going to do the Tronson Meadow Trail. Lead the way, Chief. Now it's all your show. Rest of the way. All right, week after Labor Day. Had about an inch of rain last night. It's about 60 degrees, 60, 60, 65 degrees today. Literally as good a riding conditions as you can get. This is a trail I've heard about and I've never been on it. I have ridden, this is my third riding day. In the last four. Out here with my trailer, been out here with my dog, my son, and I got my good friend McDirt here with me. And he has planned out this portion of the ride. We just finished up the Mount Lillian Trail, which goes down as one of my favorite trails of all time. And also today we did an amazing trail called the Snowshoe Ridge Trail by Lion Rock. That one was a hoot. Steep down and steep up with some crazy switchbacks. Mount Lillian was one of the coolest geological trails you've come across. Some amazing rocks and landslides, petrified landslides. And Stuff that will just leave you bewildered. Take your time and enjoy the scenery. It's an incredibly beautiful place. The entire Table Mountain area here, uh, the Ken Wilcox uh, Horse Meadow Camp, Haney Meadow, that area is right in the heart of this whole trail system. It has a public bathroom, United States Forest Service campground, primarily designated for horses. But this place is real big for hunting, horses, dirt biking, uh, snowmobiling, and I believe the Washington State BDR Trail goes through the 3500 road here from Ellensburg to Wenatchee. Oh, what a great trail. This is awesome. <laughs> Woo, just absolute hero dirt. I'm on my 450. I had some problems with my 300, so got the bigger that pig bike today. This is a pretty good trail bike though. It's a little heavier. This trail uh, so far is really nice. Doesn't have a whole lot of rock in it. Table Mountain is not too far away from where I ride a lot more often and I'm kind of kicking myself going why is it that I haven't been out here as much a lot of it was for the fact that I fell in love with Little Natchez in a big way and I've kind of ridden that place out but also since 2017 or 2018 Little Natchez has become so popular that uh, a lot of the trails there have a pretty bad problem with whoops just, you know, I'm just ridden it out too, so, but, you know, the Central Cascades from the Oregon border all the way up to, oh, Antiat. It's just one riding place after the next. What a cool trail we got going here. Yeah. Steep spot. 
spot here. golden tire fatty on the front with a moose which is just a fantastic combination many of my friends run that tire and that moose and it's like most people are like I'm done I don't want to ride anything else the moose I put 2,000 miles on it dual sporting single track everything on a western United States road trip that included a little bit of the Baja too and god even in 90, 100 degree weather, 70 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour. The tire worked great. On the rear, I've got tubeless right now with a VE33S. But more tire than I need right now. Really more of my winter tire, but uh, got it pumped up to 13 and a half PSI. The 3500 road out here at Table Mountain is incredibly rocky and bad for tires, so. Uh, on the first day of riding out here, I actually destroyed a soft Dunlop Trials tire. Had no business taking that tire out on this trail anyway, but I just kind of short tires right now and took what I had, so. Hey, should we cut this thing out? What? Do you want to cut this out? You want to saw it out? Can. Well, I was just thinking about going up it. Oh well. All right, we'll save some gas. Tronson Meadow Trail. Here we come. Beautiful grassy. Hey, there's trees here. They haven't burned down down from uh, I mean, just about everything caught on fire about 10 years ago but here we've entered a nice forest we are headed uh, due west right now with US Highway 97 otherwise known as Blewett Pass down in front of us I'm pretty sure if we wanted to we could connect this trail with 97 this trail from this other direction like staging off of 97 wow what a beautiful forest lush green grass Well, we went, we got into this trail by the Mount Lillian Trail, the top of Mount Lillian, 6,000 feet.
it. That's it. All right, going up Tronson Meadow Trail. We'll be going to the Ken Wilcox uh, horse camp.
up there. We climb higher and higher. Fantastic trail. First time on it. Loving every minute of it. We're gonna go back up to Lillian. Woo, that was fucking fun, man. Yeah, that was fun with me, right? We're getting into some sound of music shit now. There's Blewett Pass. I can see US Highway 97 right down there, the pavement. places in the entire world as beautiful as the North Cascades kind of peeking into it. I mean, it's just the whole Cascade area. Hey, look at these rocks here. Unbelievable. With beach rock and beach sand built into it. There was an ocean up here at 6,000 feet at one time. Through those to see if I can find a dinosaur. Prehistoric fish. Go further. Go One of these uh, U.S. Geological Survey type things in there. Wow, cool! Look at this tree growing in the rock. Is there a trail behind there? I don't see any. Do you? You think there's a trail up here? I think so. What's, what's the number? I'll give it to you. Here, you keep looking. I'm going to circle around a little bit.
Okay, so this one was a little hidden. This is the 1204 trail. Sure the name of this one is the 1204 trail. and it should be good based upon our elevation I think this thing just goes back down to the 35 road. I thought I saw it on that sign that we were looking at. This piece of another trail. It's gonna, it's gonna get us towards uh, devil, whatever. You know. No problem until you run out of gas. That's why you should have a bigger gas tank. I got a the 3.3 for Cherubis. McDirt's got the stock tank, but he brought half a gallon with him and some bottles. There's always the thrill of running out of gas. I've only done it a few times. That always makes for an interesting day or night <laughs> in the rain when injured. Oh yeah, it's good stuff. Oh, this trail is awesome. I keep saying that. There's a lot of great trails out here. This is fun. Another good trail. I mean, you know, good shape. I'm all chewed up. Today we've done Snowshoe Ridge Trail, which was awesome. We did the Nana Meadow Trail, which was blocked by tree fall about two thirds of the way in. We've done the Mount Lillian Trail, which is absolutely amazing. We did the Tronson Meadow Trail, which was a ripper. It was awesome. Now we've got this trail and I don't know what the name of it is. This thing too is just awesome. So today is just going down as another amazing adventure. Doing a bunch of trails I've never done before. And for somebody that rides 100 days a year or more, I've been doing that for seven or eight years now, to not have come out here of a sin. I only live about two and a half miles away. I've been riding some of my other trails too much. Sometimes you gotta break out, go hit the stuff that you're not normally ride. So this year I've kind of done that. I I've, I've did empty at last weekend for Labor Day weekend with some friends. Spent about five days out there. Spent about five days out here at Table Mountain now. Headed home tonight. My uh, third day of riding in the last four. Very nice. This Table Mountain area has just a ton of dispersed camping. Probably the best dispersed camping area I've seen in my of anywhere anywhere. I've been to a lot of good ones. But this time of the year it's hunting season, so. A lot of that dispersed camping is uh, for the hunters, but uh, there's no shortage of places to find. So the entire area of Table Mountain 
really spans all the way from U.S. Highway 97 up by Ellensburg, all the way to the Columbia River on Interstate 90, all the way north to Wenatchee on, on the one side, and then all the way up to, towards Leavenworth. And it's, it's an area that has just a ton of dirt bike trails, horseback, snowmobiling, can-am riding, uh, green dot roads. It's, just, uh, it's like 2% of the entire state of Washington, and it's very open for recreational use. The hunting here is primarily elk. Right now it's bow season, followed by muzzle uh, loader season, and then uh, rifle or whatever. But uh, I've been hearing a bugle. Getting an elk out here apparently is really hard work. You got to draw for it. You can only hit spikes, you can't hit racks. I'm not a hunter, so I don't really know. I just go based upon what my friends tell me. I'm too much into dirt bike to have time for pretty much anything else. You might be surprised to know that before I was a crazy dirt bike rider in 2015, I'd spent about 12 years playing golf about six days a week. Got burned out on golf and picked up dirt bike. At the age of 48, I'm now 55. Alright, I needed to stop there. Didn't want to be right on his heels. Alright, got a little bit of a climb here. Starting to dry out again here later in the day. But not as bad as it's been all summer long. Here in the northwest, we have the dustiest trails there are. Very fine grain, dirt, silt. Wow, what a cool view in front of me. Just trying to focus on the trail, but still, you get carried away sometimes staring. I don't want to crash, but at least I was looking ahead. Don't look to the side when you're going to gawk. That's a kick-ass trail. Wow, I'm going to stop here and take a look at the view. Wow, Stewart Range there. Oh man, this is just something else. Wow camera won't do this justice. I'll see if I can find some cool internet footage by some professional photographer. I can hear Highway 97 right there. That's Blewett Pass. Old mining area here. This whole area back in the 1800s was settled by miners and stuff like that. There's no mining operations going on here now. You follow Highway 97 up there, you get up to Leavenworth. Bunch of great trails up there too. Trail's so good, you don't want it to end. Nearby Devil's Gulch, I do believe, is kind of the crown jewel of the trail system. If I'm not mistaken, I think the entire Devil's Gulch, Devil's Gulch loop is like 40 miles long. Did it three years ago with some guys where we were doing some trail clearing, and that was a really fun day. Fairly challenging trail. It has a gulch to it devil's gulch so it's going to be challenging and it was 
three years later now, I, I find it pretty easy. Much of that's because I've got two really good motorcycles. Having a really good motorcycle makes riding the trails a lot easier. My 202300 TE Husky, that is such a good bike. I feel like I could take that thing anywhere. I'm a pretty good rider, but I mean, there's certainly a, a lot of people better than me, but I can ride pretty much everything. Got going here. Got a good old switchback. It doesn't look as steep on the camera, but that's definitely an endo material turn right there. No thanks. I've got screwed up shoulders as it is. This one I can do a slide on. No problem. Oh, this is interesting. I wonder where we're going. We're going down to 97 or? If so, we got a long ride ahead of us. Piece of exposure here, not too bad, but not the kind of place a lot of people would feel comfortable coming through from a visual standpoint. Look at these cool rocks. Man. One of my favorite parts of dirt biking is just the incredible beauty that you get to see nobody else gets to see. I mean, you could come out here and hike this, but good God, that would be a lot of work and take forever. To be able to come out here on a motorcycle and get in as many as 100 miles in a day of this kind of terrain and scenery. It's just, ah. Just something else. I mean, there's a lot I like about motorcycling, but yeah, the scenery thing might just about be my favorite part of it. Before I started uh, dirt biking, I, uh, I was not an outdoors person or a mechanical person whatsoever. One of the most least mechanically inclined people ever. I'm still not particularly great at that stuff. And then as far as an outdoorsman goes, I may have been camping, before I started dirt biking, I may have been camping 20 or 30 times in my entire life. Camping 20 or 30 times every 60 days. <laughs> it's a great lifestyle. Fortunate, I own my own business. Make a decent living. I have a wife that lets me go out and have fun. And uh, come across a lot of friends. That, I can get out and ride with. I hit around the spine. This is kind of cool. There's 97. Blew it past. Right there is Devil's Gulch. Mission Creek goes down below here. big slide area here. Don't lose the bike off the side of this thing. My first couple years of riding, exposure, stuff like this, would give me the heebie-jeebies 
just like it would anyone. But with a little practice, walking the stuff, repetition, you learn how to shut that stuff off. Now I can ride nastiest stuff. It doesn't really bother me. Now, the first time I ride a trail that's like this, I'm gonna give it some respect. You never know when there's some weird thing that pops up. I mean, like right here. This is kind of hidden here. You got this tree here, you got rock there, a drop that's dangerous there. And I'm gonna go up this, so this warrants being a little careful. I don't know what's on there. Look at the beautiful colors on the rock with the lichen. Wow, look at that. That is just absolutely gorgeous. Just unbelievable. If you're gonna appreciate the beauty, stop the bike. <laughs> Don't be gawking while you're riding. Wow, just unbelievable. <laughs> Woo! McDirt's up there on the top. I'm not sure if he's such a nature fan like I am, maybe. He's kind of a single track snob kind of guy. So I'm sure he was loving the trail, but smell the roses eh, not as much he doesn't like to stop much a little tricky spot here don't go down there Jesus Some nasty shit I'm scared. I want to go home. Okay, so apparently if you go down here, you, you, you get to a gravel road that takes you to 97. But David doesn't want to go down and back. So we're going to go behind me on another trail. So 1204 is now done. We're hitting some other trail, and I'm pretty sure that'll take us back to the 35 road. He hasn't been on it. I haven't been on it. It's supposed to be pretty good, he says. Not sure what the name is. I'll look it up and put it in the video. But this, this 1204 trail, oh man, everything so far has just been fantastic. Fucking... It's probably a lookout. Yeah, okay. I'm assuming this is taking us back down to 35. Looking good? He's deaf, so he's got hearing aids. <laughs> Let's see what that. All right.
Well, this tra trail is not overridden. <laughs> this is like a game trail. <laughs> All right, see, this is what happens when people don't ride places enough. They get underridden. Shit just disappears. People don't take care of it. So when people complain about me posting videos of trails, it's like, well, great. You can come out here and fix the trail then, okay? Single-handedly. The people that complain about me making these trails, I know some of them. They're also the people that wouldn't lift a finger or spend a dime to take care of a trail. But they'll talk it, they'll talk it real good. It's like going down a game trail. Bootleg. We've, McDirt's taking me on bootleg. That <laughs> is better worn in than this trail. But this is a good one. You want to come out on this one. Oh, we took the. Uh, we took the alternate route. I don't know. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay, <laughs> that looks a little bit more established. All right, we should have a killer view here too. Now we're on the other side of the slope. That slope facing Blewett Pass. This slope facing Mission Creek, going into Kashmir. So if a raindrop falls here, going that way. Raindrop goes that way, going on that way. They all wound up in the Wenatchee River anyway, and then turns into the uh, Columbia River, which goes down to Astoria and goes into the Pacific Ocean. After going through a whole lot of hydroelectric uh, projects with the Bonneville Power Administration. Oh, what a cool looking tree. Man, look at that thing. Oh, oh man. That one limb is almost as big as the trunk itself. <laughs> wow, the moss on the things. <sighs> All right. Well, forest fire didn't get this stuff over here. Ponderosa pine. Beautiful trees all throughout the West. Legendary Wild West stuff.
All right, switch batteries. Last battery of the day. been on this trail give it some respect the exposure here with the soft side once the bike goes off that side it ain't gonna stop for a while bike recovery is no fun all it takes is a foot or two bike back on the trail. I know, I know. I was trying myself. The only way to find neutral is when you're desperately looking for first gear. You'll find it. All right, here we go, neutral. Let's roll it out. Yeah. Not sure what the split here is, but we generally want to go up to the 35 road, so I don't know, there's a big crisscross of shit going on here. Ah, just a mess. Okay, that's what it was. 
so people made some sort of a go around so that they didn't have to deal with this step here. That's what it looks like. Come Steep hill should have probably had a switch back in it or something. View, but we are nowhere near the 35 road. I believe that is Devil's Gulch, Mount Lillian's way back up here. So, oh well, I'll behave and not ask too many questions and follow McDirt. Besides, we're having a good time. I don't think there's any worry about gasoline just yet. Plus, uh, we can always take the 35 road back to camp. Be a fairly long motorcycle ride on the gravel road, but nonetheless, we don't have to come back through these trails to find a way back, I don't think. Nice view to the right. The 
you're watching this from someplace far away, you know, where am I relative to something? We're about two, two and a half hours away from Seattle, Washington. For being a real posy sniffer of a state, liberals, obnoxious, disgusting, in my opinion. We sure got a lot of motorcycle trails that haven't been stolen away from us yet. It's coming. So ride, 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 ride. We got a long riding season too. You can ride dirt bikes in Washington State at a variety of venues, pretty much 12 months of the year. There might be one month of the year where it's just too cold, frozen over. But a lot of times it's 12 months of the year. You gonna play with your hand? It's uh, this purple. It's a little lemon. We're more than halfway done. We're actually on the hill. Or they call it the hill. We're just past it. Okay, well, let's take a little break. That's fine. facing slope right now. A little greener this way. Holds the snow longer. Keeps it wetter longer. You know, this Table Mountain area, I mean, it's got some really nice trails. Recently I was just at Entiat, and I love that too. It's just the, the temperatures out in Entiat can be just scorching hot during the summer. Dangerously so, fires and everything. I'm thinking this Table Mountain area, which is a little bit closer for me, is not 
quite as hot during the summer. Table Mountain area here, it, the peak elevation that we hit was Mount Lillian, and that was 6,000 feet. Okay, now we're on the Devil's Gulch Trail, and I believe a few years ago we cut that log that was in the trail. It was a big sucker, it took a lot of work. It's a big tree. We cut about 10 or 11 tre uh, trees as part of a group uh, effort of riders in the Pacific Northwest to open the trail up for the season that year. Memorial Day weekend, if I remember correctly. Or something around that. This is a great trail. I didn't even think we were going to be on this today, so... But it's a fairly heavily traveled trail. Compared to the ones that we've been on today. trail that we got off of that we were on the Tronson Ridge Trail from it's it got harder and harder going the direction that we were coming from and I could tell the trail was getting more whooped out the closer we got to this one because a lot of people I think go up that Red Hill Trail towards Tronson Ridge and turn around because it's a little too much mile loop I believe that I've, I've done once we're not going to do the whole thing we might only be doing uh, 10 miles of it but heavily traveled it looks like compared to what we were on but not bad fun Four fifties liking it If you're enjoying the ride with me. pain medicine before the trip and I wound up with an upset stomach that was so bad I was bedridden for a couple days after the ride <laughs> coincided with Mother's Day weekend which I had promised to take the wife and the kids out for dinner or brunch or whatever it was and I got home and Mother's Day was that next day and I had to tell my wife and kids that I wasn't going to make it because I was deadly ill. Some sort of a mixture of the two-stroke fumes and that medicine on my stomach. What was some spicy food that I'd eaten in Leavenworth, I think. Made for the 
mother of all bad gut aches. And it took a couple days to get over. the two of us were going to get in a fist fight. <laughs> oh wow, cool view. When I did this trail, I was going the other direction, so now I get to see it the other way, you know, and every trail is different going the other direction. The, the view, the obstacles, you know, going up something instead of down and vice versa. The ledge drop off becomes a ledge, a, a step up. Going down truly as one of the great ride days of my career. I enjoy riding with McDirt. He and I ride at a you know, pretty similar pace, and he can handle some gnarly shit. He's a little bit older than me, but he's still got guts. He's a tough fucker. He's got some injuries in his hand, but he guts it out. Dirt, David. We've been riding now for oh, six years. Had some good rides together. Real good ones. He's a crusty fucker sometimes. But he's also a very good planner. He's one of those guys I can trust. He he'll sit and fiddle with his maps a bit, but does his homework really studies the stuff, knows what he's doing. I feel comfortable following him. He's also got a good nose for trails. Uh, he's uncovered some of the best trails that I've ever ridden. By doing satellite recon and the place so great we named it after him, Gagnon Hawk. Just retire. Dirt and I could spend a lot more time doing adventures together. I own my own business. I, I can take a lot of time off. I'm a consultant. I got clients that have been with me for an average of at least 20 years. And uh, I have a limited number of them. They're good quality clients and they understand I like to travel and all that, but I'm available to them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I'm a pretty good consultant, so the numbers have 
people can sell. So that has afforded me the ability to make enough money to be able to do this kind of stuff. And then also be able to take enough time off to ride 100 days a year, travel, travel the country. In a month or so, I'll be uh, loading up my trailer and my dog. We're gonna travel to the east coast, the southeast. Spend a couple months in Florida on the beaches, Texas, Gulf Coast. Carolina. Did that last year, had a blast. There wasn't much dirt bike riding once it passed into Texas, but everything else about it was great. So I'll bring the 450 with me and dual sport around a little bit. Well, I'm coming back in March and April for two months. I plan on doing some riding in New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona, Utah, that kind of thing. Crampy Longhorn moved down to Phoenix, so I've got somebody to ride with down there. I'm sure he'll entertain me for a little of a ride down there. Devil's Gulch. Home to the gulch here, the trees will stop you first. Wouldn't want to hit one. Got a beautiful little pace through here. It's a nice forest. Again, the weather conditions right now are just perfect. It's low 60s, I'm thinking. Rained last night, virtually no dust. side here sandy here nice trail it's uh, wide enough to be able to carry a little bit of speed a little narrower and you start to worry about this low side David because if anyone's going to crash it's going to be the first guy. Ow! Oh, big rock came down from somewhere. Rock and roll. That was a jump I missed. Next time. Remember that. If you see the big rock, jump off the little rock to the right. Okay, we just came down Red Hill. We thought we were on the Devil's Gulch Trail, but actually uh, we weren't. I think that arrow was pointing towards. Ah, that's Devil's what it was. Gulch. Okay, well that Red Hill Trail was awesome. Wasn't it? Oh yeah. <sighs> So now we need to figure out whether we take a right or a left to get to the road. Okay, so uh, now we're on the Devil's Gulch Trail. I think we're going to be on it for about seven miles. I think otherwise it's a 40 mile loop. We just hit seven miles of it. And uh, we're going to work our way back to camp after we've been out now for four and a half hours. Time's really flown, but it's been very enjoyable riding. Rain lab. 
kind of tied a little bit so there's maybe a little more water in it, but probably a rager in the spring. A lot of snow comes down this thing. This trail is really nice right now. a few years ago he bit off a little bit more than he could chew that way trying to do too many things and it was his first time out he made a video of that so if you subscribe to his channel it's, <laughs> he's got the whole fall on his on his video if I remember correctly Deep 
trail. These trails that follow rivers and creeks like this can have some pretty sketchy side hills to them. They are fun. And beautiful. And, well, dangerous. You can see what time of the year it is. Beginning of fall. There's like no water coming through this, but you can you can tell by looking at this creek that it's a rager come uh, spring or fall when it really starts to rain again. facing west, on the west side of the gulf, Mount Lilia and all that, and you can see these huge ancient landslides that brought just enormous amounts of land down into the valley. Up there, look at that. Wow.
Wow, look at these beautiful ponderosa pine. They're like pink. Sun's just hitting them right. What a sight. Whew. All right, we're wrapping it up. Two miles. I rode the seat off the bike. The seat bolt came out. Where the fuck's the bolt? Go. It's on the trail. It fell out. It. I think you have to take the plastic. Oh yeah. You have to take the plastic off. It's, and it's stupid. It's a little one. Yeah, a little bolt. I gotta put some Loctite on it. You know they say cross threading is better than Loctite. Yeah. I can do that too. <laughs> this is a pretty good trail. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Yeah. Cool. The uh, did you go up that straight up chute? Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, stop. <laughs> Take it right. Well, what do we got left? Uh, we got a little bit. How much? About half. Half a mile. About half the trail. Oh, half the miles. trail. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. This turned out. Is this the Mission Creek Trail? This is just a, like a spur trail. Oh wow. Well, that's a good one. Trail. Yeah, this, this is... one and the one that I said we could go on. Yeah, are the two connected trails to the big road. Yeah, okay. Well, this is a good so trail. It can be like your little mini loop before you head back. Yeah. The, the Mission Creek or the Devil's Gulch. Yeah.
one more behind me too. All right. I'm assuming you guys can hear us coming. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a trail. It's a yeah, rocky. It gets, it gets more rocky up high. How's it low, rocky? Yeah, it's pretty good going all the way down. Oh, yeah. Really? Well, oh, we're, yeah. We're, we're hooking up with uh, the um, Devil's Gulch. Devil's yeah. Gulch. Yeah, yeah. We we're just like came from there. Mile, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a good ride. You guys will enjoy it. All right. The rest of the way down, you'll love it. All right, later, guys. Okay. Yep, yep. That's Glacial Till. So there was a glacier here eons and eons ago. Man-made global warming did that, right? You know, some SUVs since the early 90s. Go back to the 70s, and that was just a pristine ice field, I bet, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. That hurt. Whack my hand on that tree. Ow. That'll leave a mark. Oh. <laughs> Luckily, I've got rubber padded gloves, and I think the rubber there saved me from a broken finger when I hit that tree stump. Show you. Hit me right here. But all that rubber right there just saved my ass. Good stuff. Up. Oh. And I'm not wearing a pack. I don't have anything to drink. I haven't taken a sip of water since we took the trip. And we've passed through water. I could have grabbed a drink if I wanted, but I prehydrated. I took electrolyte pills and drank plenty before I rode. I can make it pretty much the whole day without sipping on drinks. But I'm plenty thirsty now. I'm ready for something to drink when I get back. I made it. Woohoo! slide hey, and the stuff in there wow pretty cool up we go find the road up the top there somewhere we're not far a mile or two but this has been a surprisingly good trail exiting the system I just thought it was gonna be a short little pop out to the gravel road, but no. This is a real trail here.
Mission Ridge Trail. Oh. <laughs>